The day when you left the earth and ascended to the heavens, I was an insolent child. Inside the car on the way to your burial site, I was bickering with my second elder brother, the only villain in that young life. We would play gleefully before clumsy accidents happened, then mock one another and threaten to throw each other's toys away. Dad would bellow in the car, promising to brandish a leather belt upon our best kid. It's the only thing that I was terrified of. In those fearful moments, I would have peeped behind you, tugging your buttock skirt for protection. But in the car, I could only beckon to Mum for comfort. Holding my hand, Mum besieged, Please don't fight. Yaya has passed away, yet you are still fighting. The voice forced as if thorns are caught on her throat. The red puffiness, circling her eyes, kept me quiet. At the cemetery, Mum seemed composed, perhaps consoled by the song of prayers and the congruous serenity of the lion headstones and the clear sky. With a sprinkle of earth from her fingers down to where you now rest, she broke in tears. A punctured hole in an identity card. That was what took me to understand the meaning of loss, death. The word is the rolls off yet lingers on my tongue. A taste of soot, dirt, silt, texture of gravel and sand. I thought crying uncontrollably would fill a void. Perhaps this was my first cliché thought. Mom and Dad came into the room where you and I once slept side by side in safe custody. Dad retrieved a portrait for you, for my keepsake. Mom said you would pay a visit every day during Ramadan, when all the girls and demons would be shackled in hell, and souls would roam freely to visit the houses of living relatives. I bawled enough for more time, because one month per year was not enough. Mom said if I wanted to, I could, and you would be there. I believed her. Although most days when I was much younger, I felt your presence in the hallway, the balcony, the kitchen, then your room on mine. Perhaps it was only an impression of a shadow flickering along my peripheral vision, a shadow of a bird in flight or a passing vehicle outside, a swift lightning bolt. Yet I felt the subtle interference of another dimension that I could not see, leaving only strange nimble movements, unveiled by a child's incomprehensible cry. You said in Javanese, read a prayer if you're scared, I could only read one simple prayer to fend stuff. Maybe my writing you is a resurrection, called upon by the need to remember, commemorate, and recognize the life modest and fulfilled. The envisioning gives credulity to my sensitivity. The rays that were settling in the corners of my mind are reduced to visions that kept me bottled up and uncertain. Remembering you legitimizes me as a person. It gives me, it gives me a push to rise to the occasion. Definitely had taken a while to comprehend such grandmother granddaughter's love. At the age of seven, it took me a week to realize that you were gone. Now older, I understand it is the experience of childhood and loss. Through reliving the experiences, I gather the memories and the sensations of being cradled, fed, and kept for.